Apollo Automation recently released the next iteration of their MM Wave multi sensor, the MSR2. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at it and going over my thoughts on it. MM Wave sensors have become all the rage recently, as they provide better tracking of people compared to the typical PIR motion sensor. While PIR sensors are quick at detecting, they will typically lose track of if someone is in a room or not if that person doesn't move around enough. Oh, what the heck? With MM Wave, they are slightly slower at detecting someone but you gain the ability to track one or more targets even if they are not moving around. This means that with MM Wave, your light shutoff automation won't accidentally leave you in the dark when you're sitting at your desk for an extended period of time. <sighs> really? Take note that while the MSR2 was sent to me to take a look at, the opinions in this video are my own, without any outside influence, monetary or otherwise. The MSR2 features mostly the same sensors and functionality as the already tiny MSR1 but in an even smaller package, running on an ESP32 CS3. For $35 USD, you'll get an LD24010 MM Wave radar sensor, ALTR390 UV Luxin UV sensor, and a DPS310 temperature sensor. For an additional $20 USD, you can also get an SCD40 CO2 sensor with the MSR2. The LD24010 is what provides the main function of this sensor, with its present detection and tracking capabilities. It has a distance range of up to 5 meters, with a 0.75 meter distance resolution. The detection angle is rated at 60 degrees and can track one target at a time. The LTR390UV Optical Lux sensor can report within a range of 0.01 lux up to 157k lux, and will report the UV index as well. The DPS310 will report on both the temperature and air pressure, and will help further improve on the reporting of CO2 levels if you purchase the optional CO2 module. The optional SCD40 module will give the MSR2 CO2 level readings with a range of 400 to 2000 parts per million. Take note that if you do end up getting the MSR2 without a CO2 module, you can always purchase it later and add it yourself. The MSR2 also has an onboard RGB pixel that can be used for quick notifications as well as a buzzer that can be used to grab your attention with an audible tone. Take note that you will need to supply your own power supply and cable, or you can buy a plug and mount that connects the MSR2 directly to the plug from Apollo Automation if you want. The size of the MSR2 is really unbelievable. Comparing the MSR2 to the MSR1, we can see just how much smaller the MSR2 is. The MSR2 can be set up on its own, or you can buy a ball mount option or USB-C wall plug mount, which allows her to be connected directly to a power plug. If you have a 3D printer, you can actually print the ball mount and backplate for the MSR2 with the provided 3D files from Apollo Automation. If you don't like the power port being on the side of the MSR2, you can also purchase an adapter that allows having a USB-C power port on the back side of the sensor. Setting up the MSR2 with Home Assistant is really straightforward thanks to it running on an ESP Home. First plug in the sensor and let it boot. Next, connect to the sensor's hotspot. It should be called Apollo MSR2 Hotspot. Once connected, you should be given a pop-up web page. But if not, navigate to 192.168.4.1. From here, select the wireless SSID for your network and enter in the shared secret. After, click on Save to have the MSR2 reboot and connect to your wireless network. Keep in mind that this sensor only supports 2.4 GHz wireless networks. As long as Home Assistant and your network are set up to allow it, the new device should show up under Discovered, where you can click on Configure to finish onboarding it. Here you can assign it to an area. Once all set, click on Finish. If you have the ESP Home add-on, or will be using it, now is a good time to have the MSR2 adopted. Take note that the ESP Home add-on is not required for using the MSR2 within Home Assistant, and installation of the add-on will not be covered in this video. The ESP Home add-on can make things a bit easier though, so it's something to consider. With the MSR2 now added into Home Assistant, let's now take a look at all the information it provides. To control the RGB light, you can toggle it on and off. To change the color, click on the entity, which will bring up the color picker, which allows for controlling the color, brightness, and even a few effects. If you have the optional CO2 module, then the first sensor you'll see is the CO2 level. The CO2 module will come pre-calibrated, but you may need to recalibrate it, which can be done by taking the sensor outside, leaving it on for 10 minutes, and then clicking on the Calibrate SCD40 button 
found under controls. Next you'll find the pressure and temperature. The temperature offset option can be found under configuration. Just take note that the offset is in Celsius, even if you had the temperature set to Fahrenheit. Below that is the light level and UV index from the LTR390. These two sensors have no adjustments available. The rest of the sensors are all the presence detection goodness you bought the MSR2 for. Radar detection distance is the last detected distance by the radar. This will state the last known value so it can be misleading. Radar move energy is the amount of movement being measured. The faster it is, the higher the percentage. Radar moving distance is the last measured distance of the moving target. If there is no current moving target, it will be read as zero. Radar moving target indicates if the sensor is tracking a moving target or not. It will show either clear or detected. Radar still distance is the last measured distance of a still target. It will hold the last value so it can be misleading. Radar still energy is the energy level of the current still target. The radar still target sensor indicates if there is a still target or not and will read either detected or clear. The radar target sensor is probably the best one to use to trigger automations based on presence, as it indicates if the MSR2 has a target and doesn't matter if the target is moving or stationary. The three radar zone occupancy sensors indicate if a target is detected in any of the three configurable zones, which we will be going over how to customize later in this video. While most of the settings under configuration are for the different gates and zones, there are a few different things I want to cover. ESP Reboot is pretty self-explanatory as it will reboot the MSR2. Factory Reset Radar will reboot the LD24010 within the MSR2. This can be helpful if you're noticing some oddities with detection. Using this option will also reset any of the tuning settings. The LD24010 Bluetooth option allows for you to connect to the LD24010 module with the HLK app for configuration and firmware updating of the module. Radar Engineering Mode will populate the different sensor information under Diagnostic, which can be helpful for tuning the sensor. There is a Factory Reset ESP option under Configuration that is disabled by default, and can be used to factory reset the MSR2 if you ever need to. While the MSR2 is pretty easy to get set up and added into Home Assistant, you'll probably want to tune the radar module as it can be very sensitive. The LD4210 utilizes eight different gates to determine the distance a target is from the sensor, with each gate representing a distance from the sensor. Each gate is spaced 0.75 meters between each other, with gate zero being the sensor itself. The distance of the gates are not changeable, but you can slightly get around that with radar zones, which we will be covering shortly. For each gate, there are two values, move energy and still energy. As their names imply, move energy is the energy for a moving target while still energy is for a target that is not in motion. To tune the sensor, you set the amount of energy a target requires at the gate for it to trigger. The higher the number, then the more energy required, and the lower the number, the less energy required. Keep in mind that typically, as you move closer to the sensor, more energy will be detected, and as you move further away from it, less energy will be detected. To help determine just how much or how little energy is required for your setup, you want to take advantage of radar engineering mode. This will provide all the information for the different gates under Diagnostic. With Radar Engineering Mode enabled, you can walk around your room to help best determine the energy levels you need. While Radar Engineering Mode is helpful, I'm personally more of a visual person, so staring at a list of quickly changing numbers isn't the most fun for me. Luckily, Apollo Automation created a Radar Visualization Dashboard, which really helps you see what different energy levels are doing in comparison to the current energy settings. Within the dashboard, you'll see the current move and still thresholds for each of the gates, and you can even set the thresholds as well. Just make sure to enable radar engineering mode to actually get the current energy readings. If your dashboard looks like this, that means you need to turn on engineering mode. On the dashboard, the blue line represents the threshold set, and the orange line represents the energy being detected at the different gates. So with the dashboard, you can move around your room to determine what the appropriate energy levels are for your needs. A quick tech tip, if you seem to be getting false positive alerts for presence, you'll really want to make sure to tune your sensor. The LD24010 is very sensitive. I actually saw a large number of false positives on gates 0 and 1 until I tuned my sensor using the dashboard. With radar zones, you'll have a bit of flexibility for the distances they cover. This flexibility is possible by assigning the start and stop distances for the zones. This then gives an overlay for the different gates which fall within your defined zones. By default, the zones are set very short, 
so if you plan on taking advantage of them, you'll most likely need to modify the start and stop distances, which can be found under the configuration section for the MSR2. If you need some help adjusting your zones, I recommend using the gate tuning dashboard and this diagram to help determine the rough distances you want for each zone. The dashboard can tell you which gates are being triggered as you move around your room, which can then be used to determine the actual distances you want from the diagram. Radar zones can be very helpful if you have different automations you want to trigger based on where someone is in a room or area. For example, you might want to have your fireplace turn on if there is someone sitting on the couch for a few minutes and the house temperature is cold enough. Or maybe you have an open floor plan and want to control your kitchen lights based on presence, but only when someone is actually in the kitchen area. I've had the MSR2 in my office for a while now, and I've been using it to drive my smart desk monitoring automation that helps make sure I change positions often enough while I'm at my desk. A typical motion sensor was never really enough, but with MM Wave, my office presence detection has been greatly improved. With the Lux sensor and the MSR2, I've been able to enhance my light automation, which will turn on the lights automatically when I enter my office and turn them off when I leave. But now my lights only turn on when it's dark enough in the room. This was a nice little addition to my automation, as sometimes I just don't need the light on in my office. And now, the automation only turns my lights on when I actually need them. Having the CO2 sensor right in the presence sensor also allowed me to move my Air 1 air quality monitor out of my office and into a more general space in the house. The only air quality concerns I have that are localized to my office are elevated CO2 levels. So now I'm able to run my office CO2 monitoring automation with the MSR2 and the Air 1 will be able to better detect all of my possible air quality issues more efficiently for the house. One thing I would like to mention for anyone who might be new to presence sensors in general is that most of the current presence sensors being sold are very sensitive to movement. This means things like ceiling fans or tower fans will most likely trigger a presence sensor unless care is used when picking the location of that sensor. This is the case for the MSR2, but also all of the other MM Wave sensors I have. With the ability to tune gates and radar zones on the MSR2, you may have a decent chance of getting around this issue though. Even though this isn't necessarily an issue with the MSR2, as it's a drawback for any sensor like it currently, it's something I wasn't aware of being a possible problem until I actually owned my first presence sensor and wanted to share that with you. Overall, I've been very impressed with the MSR2 from Apollo Automation. It's been a great addition to several my home automation rules, allowing me to expand on things to make my life a little bit easier. If you have MSR1s, I don't see a dire need to replace them with the 2s, unless you want to take advantage of the smaller size or expansion slot for the back facing power and the MSR1 will still be supported by Apollo Automation, which I'm glad to see. If you are looking to add presence detection to your smart home, the MSR2 is a great affordable option I highly recommend considering. If you have other automation ideas for the MSR2, let me and the community know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating!